go. Hey, you guys, welcome back. Um, been getting a lot of requests uh, for the wolf cut and surprisingly enough, the mullet. And I showed you guys how to do the wolf cut a while back. And uh, to get a good mullet, as far as a mullet haircut, that's just a bi-level haircut. But there's variables to it. Basically, bi-level haircut means a 90 degree. If you do a 90 degree haircut, you're going to have the formation of a mullet, which is shorter on the sides, longer in the back. Same thing. That's the result you're going to get because of the perimeter line. And when you hold everything straight out from where it grows, that's a mullet uh, at, at a 90 degree. And before we move forward, don't forget about my book. Uh, it's doing real well. Thank you guys, everybody. Uh, and you guys have seen the errors in it. Uh, some of the words are misspelled. I'll be honest with you. They're not, I mean, I'm sorry, not misspelled. They're, um, how can I say it? Wrong names were used. There you go. And uh, on the last chapter, which I was really disappointed about, but uh, it's still doing well. It's still rated four star by Barnes & Noble, uh, five star by, um, I, think, I think it's ABC Books in Europe. So um, thank you. I want to thank you. Uh, it's, it says everything about the salon. So I hope you guys, you know, keep on picking it up. Appreciate it. If you have anything to ask, any questions on it, please let me know. And um, but thanks. It's not real long, short book, but it's got some good stories in it. Okay, so let's move on. Anyways, I wanted to teach you about the mullet. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot one more thing. A while back, I did a video. You remember this with all the different colors? Well, I don't know if you can see it but I used a 10V. Surprisingly enough, now, do we follow the laws or the rules of color? The thing that, that's annoying, it looks, it's, it's a very soft blonde here. However, when I took a picture of it, it was much lighter. So I can't, you know, I could show you a picture, but then it would be even lighter. So however your, your uh, uh, YouTube, however the colors come out or all of that stuff, but I did leave some of the original color on the bottom for you to see. Let me pick it up here. And you can kind of see what it was before. Now, let me share something with you. Color works with color. I know this is a mullet thing, but let me give you this information. Color works with color. I used a 10V on it. People would expect me to use a high lift. No. I used a demi-permanent, semi-permanent color. Hang on, let me see, it's right here. Um, yeah, demi-permanent color with 20 volume. And uh, put it under the dryer. That's going to kick it up a bit. But it really did lift it up real nice, real soft, pretty uniform. Uh, the only thing is, you know, mannequins, they start, you can't do a whole lot with them. I still want to do my make an effort to take it to that platinum, that silver gray color. So one more application, and I think we're going to have it there. So there's no reason for me to take you through the application and go on and talk. So I'm going to be introducing it again with my other videos. Just used a 10V. The violet, if you know what combines with color, not cancels or neutralizes, combines with to create. Put that in your brain and you'll begin to understand the facts of color a whole lot more. I am going to be doing some stuff with these other colors here. I may go ahead and lighten all of it and see what happens with it. Take these two sides to this kind of level 7 color and see what happens with it. But anyways, I wanted to show this to you. And, uh, you know, I'll be sneaking it in, give you some more information. Those of you that follow me, you remember the other one where I took that up. All right? Take care. So let me move on with the mullet. Okay, with the mullet, you're going to part it off at just at the, just behind the apex, right at the line, almost into the crown, slightly above the parietal line. Okay, the parietal line's right here, slightly above that, there's the apex. This is why I teach you all the different parts of the head. 
you and I then are speaking the exact same language. It's not a here or over there or curve of the head. There's nothing wrong with saying that, but this curve exceeds a lot. This is the lower ridge, this is the upper ridge. That is a curve, yes. But if we don't know where we're at, how do we know where we're going? So what we're gonna do with this, I've parted it up to tip of the ear from that area, all right? So this is gonna come forward and this is going to come back and up, as you can see. That's the cut, but it's coming to the center. All right, we're not w working it around. It's all coming to the center this way, and it's coming to the center back. And then I'm gonna show you what we need to do to make it into a mullet from that. This is the beginning of it. So I'm gonna just pie shape it. These are all triangle parts. All right, so part it down the center, Pie shape it, in other words, that's a triangle. I'm bringing it up to, right, this first cut is up to the frontal fringe, right here. And I'm gonna cut it, taking it, the nose is my guide, right to the center, cutting it at the angle, and I'm gonna turn them around so you can see what I'm doing, cutting it at the angle of the frontal fringe. Not upward, not horizontal, that same slight 45 degree angle cut into that center frontal fringe. All right. And you can almost start seeing that mullet come in. I am going to clean up the bang in a little bit. Now I'm going to take another triangle part. Now that one's to the tip of the ear. And again, bring it forward. And there's variables. Now the nose is my guide. There's variables to this mullet cut. And you can see it already. Now we are going to be getting rid of this corner because on the mullet it's shorter on the side. All right, so just hang on a minute. We will. So I'm going to take the other side now. Pie shape it. Take it. See, I took it right to the parietal line. I'm going to create my guide. And I'm going to come around this way so you can see it. Find my guide at that center area. There it is. Again, slight 45 degree angle. And then another triangle part. And this time a little bit lower. This time it comes out straight. Up, up, you know, just follow the forehead then. Oops. What'd you do, cameraman? See messing up? All right. So now you can kind of see that it's coming into that choppy mullet cut. And we are going to take care of this in just a minute. I'm going to show you how to do that. The back for the mullet, because it is actually a choppy look, uh, especially if somebody has like wavy hair, not recommended for people with curly hair. They'll just boom, they'll balloon out. All right. So again, Everything is triangular parts. Now this time we're going to hold it in this form out, but we're going to cut it towards that center crown. You see it, it's held out in this form, but however, and that's not on the board, so take note of that. And you can see that lift already, that little cupping around that happens here. That's what creates that. If you cut it vertical or horizontal, you're not going to get that cupping. You're going to get a hard line. All right, so another, let me turn this thing around for you. Another triangle part. Pick it up. The reason, especially back here for the triangle parts, you see that? And look, 45 degree angle. That's my focal point. Again, everything points to that center crown. Now this looks slightly horizontal, but it's actually at an angle about like this as I cut. And look at the shear. The shear is going in that direction. So see that start cupping around. That's what creates the cupping around it. If I were to cut it straight across, you wouldn't get that. You just get a bunch of layers. But because shorter moves longer, this is kind of making that longer on the bottom pop up a little more. All right? 
another triangle part, and they have to be triangle parts. Uh, you want uh, a variety of different lengths here, and you notice they're all coming to the center, all pointing to this area, to that center point. That's the focal point in this. And last one. Watch how I point my fingers to that center crown at a slight angle. There you see it. See all that choppiness? Now, at the center occipital, we're still going to elevate it up, but we're bringing it down. We're not bringing it up so much. So what I'm going to do at the center occipital, before we get into the nape, these are going to be uh, vertical lines, the reason or vertical sections. The reason for that is that this is now rounded and sloping down. If I do triangle parts here, is it going to change a lot? No, but it may move it forward a little too much. All right, so again, I'm pointing towards the occipital. And look at that. I wish this was, um, I wish it was. Uh, highlighted or something so you could see a lot more of this and I may just go ahead and do a foil weave on it and then again bring it up to you again again see how I'm holding it almost straight out almost straight out slightly lifted and then cut in this direction that's the whole clue to creating that mullet that full and very close to the wolf look too if you think about it Okay, start from this side, pick it up at that center occipital. If I didn't know where the center occipital was, and I was just saying in the middle here, none of us would be speaking the same language. Point it towards that center occipital, and now I'm going to blend. So this is pretty much just a really choppy, movable cut. Now we're not going to get rid of length because we want this mullet to, you know, to uh, increase in length, but we are going to again down here. We brought it to the nape. You see that? It's coming to the nape line, pointing it to the center. And watch, see how that just curled around all by itself. It just, it'll do it for you. Again, I'm going to cut it in this form so you can see it. My fingers are pointing in, into that nape line, again at an angle. Get this one, and I want to keep the length because I want to keep it really choppy. So look at that lift that we've got. That's what creates a mullet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this area here. I'm going to pick this up again. And this time I'm going to point cut it at a 90. I want you to see something here. This has become a corner, short, short, long. We're going to get rid of that corner by point cutting. The reason I'm doing that is because notice I'm doing it vertically. So then they can either comb the mullet back or if you want it shorter, if you want that true shorter hair here, this is your guide. That area at the, at the slightly above the parietal line that would be your guide to take and just do some face framing. Alright, so I'm going to take the other side now. Again, the same thing. Get that corner. And there it is. It will still have a little bit of a corner right there. Alright. Now let's see, yep, pretty even, still have a little bit of a corner there, and this is from cutting right to left, there it is. Alright, and again, you can see that it's up. Now we want a true mullet, how to mullet. So here's the variables, you could leave it. Some guys want it a little bit longer on top. They want to be able to take it back, have it messy. Uh, you could leave it like that if you want. We're not going to leave it like that. We're going to take it shorter, but then again, this is what I'm saying. Once it's off, you can't put it back. It's 
So I'm going to pull this back and all I'm going to work from the apex down just in front of the ear right where the sideburns are. That's all I'm going to do. Now the decision here needs to be do I want volume or do I want just movement? Above the parietal line, I want volume. I want that to pop up. So I'm gonna take it just to the center apex, and that's this right here. Just to the center apex. Cut it front to back. That creates volume. All of those hairs are cut exactly the same length. They're strength in numbers. And look at that pop up. You see what I'm saying? So let's go to the other side, bring that up, use that same guide, center apex, and there you go. Now let's say that this person doesn't want it on their face. They like this, but they don't want it up on their face. All right, frontal fringe, that's all. Do not go back into the apex. You want to part it off to the parietal line and you want to create again what? A triangle. I'm going to bring it forward and I'm just going to cut it vertically. There you go. That was showing more of a mullet. They can feather it back. They can bring it forward. Now how do we get rid of this? All right, that is the sideburn. I'm going to do nothing else but face frame. And instead of now, what I'm judging by, I'm judging by the eyebrow. How much length do we take off? This is what you discuss with your client. Do they want it to look really choppy? If they want it to look really choppy, you're going to bring it forward in this form to face frame and kind of roll it around your finger just a little bit. If they just want the length taken off, then you're going to part it. Let's do that first. You're going to part it from the parietal line to the tip of the ear. Parietal line to tip of the ear. And instead of cutting it in that form, we say, you know, how much length do you want off? Well, I want it touching the ear. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? They want it touching the earlobe. They don't want it above the ear. And instead of cutting it straight across, point cut. You want it choppy. You don't want hard lines with a mullet. You want just choppy movement that they can scatter it. Let's see what happens with that. It falls back. Strength in numbers, shorter moves longer. So you're going to pull it back. And let's say that, and if they want it shorter, you can always do a zero first back here. The biggest thing is, is that perimeter line becomes your guide. It's very difficult to um, do a true mullet if you're going to have a hard line down here. So you almost have to elevate it out when you do that zero. You know, subsection it off at the nape, your nape line back here, and um, then bring it out at a 45 degree to cut it so that you can then still have that slight layering in there. Okay, so let's say that they're saying, well, you know what? I think I want this a little bit shorter. I want this to push back more, okay. So we're going to then bring it up again. See, I'm just holding it at that angle. I know you may not be able to see it, so I'm gonna raise my arm up. An angle, not vertical. Again, point cut. Because what shorter, moves longer. There you go. It's going to do it even more. Of course mannequins don't like to play all the time, but see it's doing it. Just let me wet it here and you'll see that it's going back. And we've got that nice choppy mullet. It's got a real good look to it. There you go. Very choppy. Definitely mullet type, and if the guy wants to put his hair in a ponytail, he can, and still have that nice mullet look to it. All right, so let's do the other side. Then. Let's match that up. Wet that down. 
And the biggest thing is, is if you know where you're at, if you know what direction you're cutting, pause this, you guys, pause it, and take your notes. If you don't write it down, it's harder for you to remember. You know, to watch something makes it extremely difficult to remember. And everything, like I said, is done in triangular partings. How oh, wonderful our dogs are barking out there. So again, bring that forward, Just like I said, right there. And then we're going to go ahead and take this off. Since you've got a pretty good idea how to do it now. Again, point cut it. God, I'm sorry, the cone's in the way, I know, and you can't see it. All right, again. And then he says, well, you know what? I want that little shorter. That's all you section out. You're going to pick it up to this line. Look at that. I'm picking it up to that line. That's the same line that I parted. Take it up to it. And it goes back. Shorter moves longer. If he says, I still want it just a little shorter than only half of that. Leave this alone. Bring that up. And see, mullets don't normally go above the ear when they're cut. They go over the ear. They cover that earlobe. You wet it again because the way this mannequin is set up, that's meant to come forward. And I mean, it would go back if I blow dry it. There you go. But see how nice that, that just pulls that back. And then you've got that scattered in the front. Nice scattered look in the front. And then if they want it back, if they want to comb it to the side. That's, by the way, this, this area of taking it and pie shaping it, it lets you take it to either side. That's what's nice about it. So they can take it to the other side, take it back. Now let's take it over to the other side again. It goes back and still has that nice choppy, choppy volume. You're going to have a corner following the parietal line. That's up to you if you want to get rid of that. There it is, right there. Just a slight corner, not a lot, but that's up to you if you want to get rid of it. My only recommendation is if you think, you know, I think I want just a little more lift, but look at the lift that we got from that. Now on the wolf cut, it's just left longer. That's all. Same cut, just left longer. And looks choppy, they get the lift, they get that coming forward. You don't take it off in this area, you just bring everything forward into it. But the mullet is shorter to longer. Used to be called a bi-level cut in the 60s and 70s. Very popular look. Now a mullet is kind of coming back some guys are getting a soft perm to go with it, uh, just to get that little bit of movement still. Now you could use a texture shear. By the way, let me get my texture shear. Do we have it here? Brick cameraman, could you get me that shear that looks like a comb? It's right there. Looks like it's got a little comb on the end of it. Thank you, yes. Okay, what I want to show you about the texture shear, I mean, we have volume, right? We've got a decent amount of volume. The texture shear is not taught very much. It's uh, kind of ignored a bit, surprisingly enough. But let me part it down the center. And again, front to back. Now see where I cut that? That's what I'm talking about, that corner that you're gonna have. All right, you can either keep it or get rid of it. All right, so, don't do that to your client. All right, so the teeth, are going to be coming to the center, pointed towards the center. And I'm going to do diagonal, diagonal when I cut it. Diagonal, diagonal. Look at that stay standing. And then again, look at that lift just from doing that texture shear. I can scatter it and it stands up by itself. I'm going to turn it around and I'll see the other side is standing up, but not near like this. So if they say, you know, if you've got it and you want to take off more, if you want to take off more length, by the way, you can get rid of this. All right? You can take that off. That's just a corner down at the center. 
and let me clean that up a bit and I'm just doing it with a texture shear and again look at that volume that lift I'm going to turn it around and just get on the other side I'm at the upper ridge by the way I'm parting it off at the upper ridge and bringing it to that center apex angle angle again look at all that lift here's another thing I want this hair to go back your texture shear the comb to the texture shear all right I want this to go back I want it to go back naturally again diagonal diagonal comb it back it goes back by itself now this section diagonal diagonal comes back no problems. Stay here. This one I'm going to do scissor over comb. Yeah, it's just going back by itself. Look at that. It goes back by itself. So learn how to use your texture shear. It does have a purpose. I'll do it on this side as well. And I'm going to open it up for you to see it. They, oops, sorry, sorry, just made a mistake. I made them coming forward. It's got to go back. Look at your comb. I thought I was perfect, darn it. Diagonal, diagonal. Let's hope it goes back without a bunch of problems. Yeah, it's trying to lay down a bit because I put that one in there, that one clip. Yeah, it's laying down a bit. So be careful about that. Look at your texture shear before you do it, which is what I should have done instead of talking. See, the comb is going back. Now this will push that back. Yep. All right. Last section, do it scissor over comb, diagonal, diagonal, back over there. And now this is going back a little bit better. This side's fighting a little bit more, but isn't that what hair does? One side grows forward, one side grows back. So, and if you want shorter bangs, but there you go. There's your mullet, mullet haircut. All that length in the back, and then choppy, and you see that this choppiness stays within this realm. The length in the back, that's why we parted it off right back behind the apex. People tend to go a little too far back or too far forward. If you know where the end of the apex is at, and that's the highest portion of the head, you know, it's just below or above the upper ridge. Here's the parietal line, that's the upper ridge on the entire head form. If you put the comb like this, there's your apex, there's your parietal line, there's your lower ridge. Uh, it's all right there for you guys. You can figure it out. How much time do we have, cameraman? A minute and a half. We have a minute and a half. If you guys have any questions or any comments, please let me know. I'm sorry that right now I'm teaching at a school and uh, it's pretty busy and stuff. So hopefully I'll, uh, I may just decide to do this and uh, not be involved with other stuff anymore and give you guys a lot more detailed lessons uh, on hair cutting, on color. Uh, hopefully we can come up with some more stuff. I would like to do just a, another theory class on color, but here again is the problem. My color on my board is not going to be the same as yours. That's why I strongly recommend for you guys to pick up color swatches from I mean, the hardware store. I hate doing this to them, but it's a real good example for you. Or just go look at them. Go look at them and see what they are from lightest to darkest and try and decipher. All right, you guys, take care. God bless. Don't forget my book. See you later.